Hey, good afternoon folks, Steve Cal5JUF. Got another video here and something I have really had a lot of interest in uh, and I've been watching a ton of YouTube videos trying to learn as much as I can and really some of this stuff is pretty fascinating. But what I want to go over today is the FT991A tuner and a little bit about how it works. And also I want to discuss uh, at a very high level uh, impedance matching and uh, feed line differences and some of the things that I've learned. Don't know if it's all correct, but uh, you know what? Hey, it's all fun. I'm going to discuss primarily the 991A antenna tuner operation and how the tuner can adjust the impedance mismatch of your antenna feed line into the radio, uh, essentially uh, protecting the radio from uh, SWRs. This is what we're going to go over, 50 ohm impedance, balanced and unbalanced, uh, how the FT991A tuner works, and of course some examples on my Charlie Papa 610, uh, and I've got some videos uh, in front of the radio where we actually do some stuff there and kind of show you some things. So in ham radio, most all radios are set up for an impedance of 50 to 52 ohms. Most all coax is also at the same impedance. And I'm going to discuss using a uh, what's called a vertical non-balanced and balanced feed line antennas and how uh, the FT991A tuner uh, adjusts for the different uh, antenna feed line impedances. The FT991A, very important, does not correct any impedance mismatch in your feed line. It only tricks your radio into seeing what looks like a balanced feed line. And below is an example if you have an impedance of 55 ohms on your antenna feed line and a radio balance of 50 ohms, your SWR is going to be 1.1, and that's how you solve for that. This example here shows an antenna with 75 ohms, and of course with that your SWR would be 1.5. This is a chart. Uh, this is the actual specifications for the 991A. It will adjust from 16.7 up to 150 ohms. Uh, so it has the ability to essentially, uh, whatever your SWR reading is, if you have the antenna tuner turned off, this is what you would actually see going into the radio. And if you turn on the tuner and engage it for that particular frequency, this is what you would see here it would be a 1. So the tuner, again, can adjust, and this is an example here of a antenna with 120 ohms impedance, and if the antenna tuner was turned off, your SWR meter would read approximately 2.4. If you turn on the antenna tuner, it would drop it to 1. Now remember, your feed line impedance is still going to stay the same, but what this does here is this just tricks your radio Trick's probably not the best word, but it adjusts your radio impedance so that there's not a mismatch, which can cause problems. This example here shows a 75 ohm, and of course with the uh, formula, the ratio would be, our uh, SWR would be 1.5, and of course with the tuner turned on, it will drop it down to 1. Now this is a situation here, if you had 175 ohms, uh, the, and the actual antenna tuner, anything above 3, the uh, antenna tuner will not adjust it, and it will uh, immediately exit from the tuning function, and the radio will not transmit on the, anything higher than 3, so uh, that's kind of a good design. So, real quick, something I've been learning about is unbalanced and balanced feed lines. Essentially, the antenna system has a direct connection to your coaxial connection on the back of the radio. If it's a balanced feed line, this might be an example, for example, of an off-center fed dipole, which would create a impedance, say, for example, 250 ohms, and you would use a ballon that would actually present a rate of impedance of roughly 62 ohms. And of course, this does not make a hard physical connection. It uses a ballon, ballon transformer to get the impedance into the range where the radio can, can manage it. This is an example here of a uh, quarter wave uh, antenna. And one of the things that's pretty cool is, uh, 
If your radials are directly at 90 degrees, your impedance on that line will probably be around 75 ohms, something that's pretty cool. And you guys have probably all seen this on the test question. If you drop that radial to 45 degrees, your impedance will definitely come down and you'll almost have a direct match from your antenna feed line to the radio. This is an example of an off-center fed, which might have an, uh, an impedance of 250 ohms. And what you would typically do here is you would use, a, for example, a 4 to 1 ballon, and then that would drop that ohms down to 62.5, which is manageable at about a 1.25 SWR. And this is with the antenna tuner turned off. And of course, if you turned on the antenna tuner, that would bring it down to 1. This is an example of how to calculate a dipole. Uh, if you're you, everyone probably knows this, but if you want to make a 10 meter dipole, what you would want to do is you would want to take 468 divided by 28.5. That would give you a length of 16.4 feet times 12, 196 inches divided by 2 would be 98 inches on each side of the dipole. And this example here shows it with the ballon one to one. It's not necessary to have a ballon, but um, I think it'll work either way, but the important thing is, is the feed point impedance, and I'll go with that next. In this example, typically you might have a, a feed point here of, say, 55 ohms on your dipole, and you would use a one-to-one -one ballon, which would present 55 ohms into the FT991A, which essentially is almost a balanced one-to-one -one SWR. No problem here. One of the things that's pretty cool is if you have an inverted 45 degree dipole, uh, just moving it up at this type of angle, your impedance on your feed line will actually increase. And I, a lot of the videos I see mention numbers around 75 ohms and so forth. Again, with the one-to-one -one ballon, that would present 75 ohms to the radio. And even if the antenna tuner's turned off, that will give you an SWR of 1.5. A sloping V will go the opposite direction, uh, 30 ohms, and of course the same example here, you would have an impedance of roughly about 1.6. But keep in mind, if you turn on the antenna tuner and run it, it will actually take it to 1. So the antenna tuner is located inside the radio. It has 100 memories, 11 of these are allocated at the factory during final tune-up and alignment, and the antenna tuner can adjust anything less than 3.1. So this shows a typical situation here. Uh, it shows, uh, it, it typically will bring anything here down into this area here and pretty much flatline it. Now this shows here, if it's above three, it will not tune it. This is important. SWR, after tuning, if it's less than 2.1, the tuner settings are stored in the memory. Now, if, if it's over 2.1 uh, after tuning, uh, you're, it will not be retained in memory. But keep in mind, if you, and that says after tuning, that's important. So if it's 2.1 and you, or if it's 2.4 and you run the antenna tuner and it brings it down to 1, you don't have a problem. Uh, anything with a SWR higher than 3 will flash high SWR and the tuner will immediately be disengaged and the radio will not transmit. So uh, for the most part, my experience has been this tuner brings everything down, so it's not a big deal. This is just uh, shows my CP610 running about 70 ohms there. 70 ohms there, there it is on the uh, six meter. So conclusion, uh, I leave the SWR visible at all times and on the, on the uh, CN9001, I leave the power average in 200 watts. All right, sounds good, so, and uh, we'll go with the radio. Hey folks, uh, welcome back, part two of the video here. So what I covered earlier was kind of going over uh, a little bit about the antenna tuner. So what, I, what I've got here, this is the antenna tuner, and this is the button for it here. If you uh, dial in a frequency, you can go ahead and what you can do is you can bring in, for example, this one here. And if I press the tuner button, uh, what you can do here is... I've already programmed this frequency before, so it's in the memory. So if I key down, and I'm going to key down, no one's on the air right now. 
This is Kilo India 5 Juliet Uniform Foxtrot. Now what you're noticing is there's no movement down here on the SWR bar and that's important. Uh, if you've again if you have tuned in on a particular frequency uh, it has up to 89 different memories so uh, it remembers it. Now if I turn off the antenna tuner I want you to notice what happens. Kilo India 5 Juliet Uniform Foxtrot calling CQ CQ. We're running an SWR of about 1.4, 1.4, and that's coming directly from the antenna in the feed line. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to engage the tuner, and I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate. For example, if you have never used the tuner on a particular frequency, I'm going to press and hold it, and it will tune down. And remember, you are transmitting, so kind of make sure there's no one on the air when you do this. Now, when I key up now, the SWR is going to be at 1. Kilo India 5, Juliet Uniform, Foxtrot. Kilo India 5, Juliet Uniform, Foxtrot. Alright, so that's the 10 meter. Now, what I want to show you on the 6 meter is, uh, I've worked on the CP610 and I was actually able to get the SWR down to about 2.3. Now, I'm going to disable the tuner and I'm going to key up with 50 watts and you're going to notice the SWR coming from the antenna feed line is going to be about 2.4. This is Kilo India 5 Juliet Uniform Foxtrot. Now that's below 3 so the radio can deal with this however I really want to make sure I'm running the tuner in this situation because right now I've got about 2.4 coming back into the radio. Now when I press the tune button it already has it in memory, so when I key up, it should stay at 1. Kilo India 5, Juliet Uniform, Foxtrot. It was in memory. Now, if I want to just, if I've never been on this frequency before, I could press and hold it. So what I'm showing you here is, when the antenna tuner is turned off, you're going to see the true uh, antenna feed line mismatch on the SWR, but with the tuner engaged, what the radio is going to do is it's going to keep it at one-to-one -one so that it doesn't damage your radio. Now let me show you what it does up on the uh, SWR meter. I use a CN901 inline so I can always look at the actual feed line SWR not what the tuner is telling the radio. So let me move up there real quick. Okay, what I'm showing you here is I have the uh, 0 to 200 enabled here and on this button here, I have this one. You want to leave it out. See, there's out, there's in. What we're looking at is when you're running PEP, it doesn't actually give you the SWR, so you need to leave this button pushed out or left out. Now, what's going to happen is you're going to see the power going forward and the reverse. Now, keep in mind when you're looking at average power, your peak power is going to be divided by two. So if you see 30 watts here, that's more like 60 watts. Now this is on 10 meter, this is, I've got the antenna tuner turned on, this is what's going on on the feed line, and this is important because I want to be watching this, even though my radio is, the tuner's lying to the receiver telling it it's a, it's a match, I want to see what the feed line's doing. Kilo India 5, Juliet Uniform, Foxtrot, and you can see we're almost flat there. And that's where we want to be on 28, it's very good, very good SWR. All right, now we're going to go to 6 meter. Now this is not going to be so pretty, but this is truly what's going on on the feed line. Kilo India 5, Juliet Uniform Foxtrot. Let me turn on the tuner. Kilo India 5, Juliet Uniform Foxtrot. Remember, I'm running the tuner, so the radio is protected. Kilo India 5, Juliet Uniform Foxtrot, calling CQ 6 meter. Got a much higher SWR there, but uh, that's okay. Because what's, what's happening here is, like I said, regardless of what the tuner is doing or how the tuner is manipulating the impedance for the radio to make the radio happy, this is what's going on on the feed line and you want to keep an eye on this. This is real important. I'll go up to FM real quick and show you what that looks like. Uh, see if anyone's on the frequency here on FM. Tuner is on. Kilo India 5, Juliet Uniform Foxtrot. 
Again, this Charlie Papa 610 is perfect. 10 meter, you can talk, uh, upper side band, FM and AM, less than 1.5. All right, hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, thanks again for watching 73. Have a good weekend, and a good 4th of July.